The crypto market has always got something cooking. Steven Nureyov just recently posted out a particular article on Bitcoinist.com. He says that the ETH founders fraud is bigger than the FTX fraud. This is something, of course, we need to be aware of. We need to start digging. What exactly are the issues here? Will it impact the crypto market? And why does Steven say these things? In this video, we'll go through this news as a researcher, an investigative journalist would go through the news. That means we just don't accept the headline. We must look more deeply. Let's run the numbers. It's always important to get background information on what is happening. Don't necessarily trust a headline. It could be correct or it may be incorrect, but that's not the point. You need to look more deeply. Back on May 16th, 2023, US prosecutors drop extortion charges against early advisor to the Ethereum network. Steven Nureyov was an early advisor to the Ethereum network and he was charged with criminal extortion. Those charges were dismissed by a New York judge on May the 5th. That ended a three and a half year legal battle. The criminal extortion charges against Steven were dropped because the court was unable to prove the charges in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt. However, Nureyov's employee, Michael, pleaded guilty to extortion and faces a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. We'll follow up on what's happened to Michael shortly. Nureyov's lawyers said that he'd been set up by the FBI. Nureyov's lawyers also claimed that Halliday was an FBI informant. This Coindesk article says the credibility of Nureyov's story isn't helped by his own reputation for stretching the truth. In the past, he has styled himself as the co-founder of Ethereum, which has been labeled as a, an exaggeration by the early Ethereum contributors. There's no doubt that the US government's cri crypto crackdown has been pretty severe. Nureyov's claims are likely to resonate with truth to a lot of different people inside the crypto industry. Stephen also made headlines as far back as September the 19th, 2019, in Yahoo Finance, early Ethereum advisor Steven Nureyov arrested in alleged multi-million dollar cryptocurrency extortion scheme. Now we know that court case was dismissed. Nureyov and Halliday were charged with threatening to destroy a Seattle-based startup that issued cryptocurrency tokens as loyalty rewards. In November 2017, the company planned an ICO and agreed to an arrangement in which 22.5% of all funds raised and 22.5% of the cryptocurrency tokens issued would be paid to Nureyov for supporting a successful ICO. However, days before the ICO, Nureyov demanded an additional 17,000 ETH valued at nearly 8.5 million for no additional work. This would have effectively nearly doubled his compensation. He threatened to derail the ICO and destroy the company if his demands were not met. So the story goes in Yahoo Finance. Later, Nureyov introduced Halliday, who was famed as an operations guy with an imposing background in national intelligence that included taking down a head of state. In March 2018, the two men allegedly threatened the company and demanded a loan of 10,000 ETH worth 4.45 million at the time in order to avoid the company's destruction. The money was sent to Nureyov and was never repaid. I'll make sure this link is available in the description. This is the DOJ, the Department of Justice. It's the press release surrounding Nureyov's and Halliday's arrest and you can see there's some quite interesting detail here and the attachment of the complaint as well. They each faced up to 20 years imprisonment if they were found guilty. And we know Halliday pleaded guilty to extortion in April of 2021 and faces a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. April the 7th, 2021. Blockchain consultant pleads guilty to extortion charge. This specific story says on March the 28th, 2018, Halliday sent a text message to the company executive stating, in part, I promise I will destroy your community if the startup did not comply with the demands. 
So far, I can't find any sentencing information on Halliday's conviction. When you read something, it's important to look into the background. Now we've got some sort of perspective on Stephen. It doesn't mean Stephen is wrong in what he states, but let's look into what he's talking about. Without this background, this, this could be misinterpreted because essential context could be lacking. Investigative journalists always look into all the facts and data. Let's look into that article from Bitcoiners.com. Ethereum insider drops bombshell. ETH founders fraud bigger than the FTX fraud. Attorney and former advisor for ETH, Stephen Ureyoff recently published a shocking piece about Ethereum in an X post on Thursday. We'll look at that in a minute. The lawyer who has personal knowledge of ETH, having worked for the blockchain network previously, has come forward with explosive allegations regarding the actions of Ethereum founders Vitalik Buterin and Joseph Lubin. Nureyev says Ethereum is the fraudulent <laughs> elephant in the room in plain sight, a thousand times bigger than SBF, of course Sam Bankman freed from FTX. Nureyev has not provided any concrete evidence to support his claims against the Ethereum founder's alleged fraudulent activities. As the article states, but this is not the first time the lawyers targeting of ETH founders with corruption accusations. Earlier in September, the, uh, the former Ethereum advisor accused Vitalik Buterin and his father Dmitry Buterin of a combined effort to ruin his reputation by accusing him of the extortion of an ETH ICO. Nureyev disclosed that the founders Joseph Lubin and Vitalik Buterin have allegedly been colluding, that is working in secret, with corrupt US government officials from some of the highest federal agencies. Of course, he's talking about the FBI and also the Securities Exchange Commission. The claims have yet to be verified. Nureyev's tweet is, Ethereum is the fraudulent elephant in the room in plain sight with a thousand times bigger than SBF. Joe Lubin and Vitalik Buterin have been the front with corruption officials at the highest levels of federal agencies, such as Clayton, Gensler and many others. Cover this now. This was in response to Tiffany Fong's tweet about SBF. The comments reception was reasonably mixed. What do you do if you're a trader or investor in Ethereum? If you're a trader, it's fairly straightforward. Look at the structural levels of ETH and get ready, ready for a little bit of volatility. People just tend to read a news headline and act on the headline and don't do the background research. Is Stephen correct or incorrect in his assertions? Nureyev's post has had mixed reception. The crypto market is in its infancy and that volatility, that risk is driving the returns from the market. Nureyev's next, next step is obviously to provide some concrete evidence to support his claims. The key here is without evidence, this is nothing more than a statement. It's literally just like an opinion unless it's backed up by something substantial. People are speculating on what the evidence could be with a few people suggesting it could be something to do with the fee structure of Ethereum. The ETH fees just get crazy from time to time. But the real key is for Stephen to provide the information. The Let's turn our attention to Ethereum and look at what the charts are telling us. The first thing we need to understand, where are the structural support and resistance levels? And we need to look across 3000 plus days of data to understand where the non-retail levels are, where the algorithmic levels are. We can see that Ethereum broke out, filled the fresh air gap and has been rejected by upwards resistance. This is exactly what the market would expect at this time. Now we've seen Ethereum come down slightly, but is this a cause for concern? To answer that question, we must stack probabilities and look at Bitcoin's structural levels. We know no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. So when we look at Bitcoin, if Bitcoin is decreasing in value, obviously it's going to pull Ethereum and all of the other alts down with it. 
Let's again look at the structural levels over 5,100 plus days worth of data. What do we see? We see that Bitcoin was coming in to structural resistance levels and they were heavy sell levels. That meant that the sellers were in control and pushing Bitcoin down to the lower structural support level down here at 34,434. We've seen that that fresh air gap is getting action, but we're also seeing some power back inside of Bitcoin. What does this mean to Ethereum with a stacking of probabilities and a correlation? The understanding of those rules, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Ethereum is just acting as we would anticipate right now. Changing to the two hour basis, we've seen that Bitcoin came up, challenged structural resistance and what does structural resistance mean? The sellers are heavy there. It just pushed it down. So the crypto market is just behaving as we would anticipate. There are no shocks to the system right at this current time. Intercorrelations and interdependencies are how we actually understand where the market is going. Looking at total crypto market cap, we're analyzing nearly 3,900 days worth of data when we pop on the indicator. What do we see? Total crypto market cap, that is Bitcoin and everything else, including Ethereum, came up through this particular resistance level at 1.277 trillion. It came up to the next resistance level at 1.29 trillion. It couldn't get up to the higher structural resistance level above. And don't forget, these are the professional structural resistance and structural support levels drawn out across all of price action. Literally, we're looking at lines drawn from 4,000 days of data. This is not recent indicative price. We can see we couldn't get up to that $1.302 trillion mark. We were pushed down through one level of structural support, hit another level of structural support, which was resistance before, but now it's acting as support. We're seeing the alt market come back to life and trying to convert this $1.29 trillion resistance level into a support level. That would indicate that we're trying to challenge this $1.302 trillion resistance level. Therefore, what is the crypto impact of Nureyev's statements? Absolutely nothing. We'll keep, be keeping a close eye on this story to see how it emerges over time. We've looked at this story as an investigative journalist would look at it. First of all, we got the background. We understood where the different parties were coming from. Then we looked at the actual news article. We sought to seek if it had any justification, any supporting evidence of which there was none. Then we looked into the market to see how the actual charts price reality was dealing with it. We then cross correlated Ethereum to Bitcoin and total crypto market cap, two very important things to do. And we can see that price has just been moving in a wave. It's absolutely disregarded this story as anything significant. This video was a direct response to a beloved community member reaching out and saying, Ken, is this an issue? Whatever you need, I'll seek to create a video on that. Please let me know what topics, ideas and insights would help fast track your success in trading and investing. My goal is to help you fast track your journey into becoming a professional trader investor who is consistently profitable based on my nearly 40 years inside financial markets, thereby assisting you to become more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. I hope this video has helped you out and please reach out in the comments and let me know what I can do for you. What topics you're interested in. Your success inside financial markets means everything to myself and to Kate. Have a great day or night ahead my friends and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.